Hey there everybody, welcome back. Today's video is going to be different. I recently posted on my YouTube community page asking for my subscribers to ask me any questions that they'd like me to answer in a video and this is it. I got, I got a lot of good questions actually and I even extended that to some of uh, the people who follow me on Instagram as well. So what I'm going to do is just read out the question, the person who asked the question, and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. So let's go. So the first couple of questions actually come from one of my subscribers, Christopher Sisk. Thank you for your great questions. Um, the first question he's asked me is, what was the one fragrance in my collection that I was most surprised by in that I wasn't expecting to like it um, but ended up really enjoying and even love. That's pretty easy to answer for me. It's actually this one here. This is Equipage Geranium. Uh, I recently did a review on this. The reason why I wasn't expecting to love it was I had it in my head that geranium or anything geranium centric was not going to be anything I liked and that's simply because I, geranium is a real scent from my childhood and it's not necessarily a negative scent it's just something very common in the gardens where I grew up and it was almost a case of familiarity breeding a little bit of contempt and it was all unconscious I had no negative associations with it. I just didn't think that I'd like to smell like that particular scent. Uh, so when I was sent a little parcel with a couple of samples in it, uh, this one was in that parcel. I would never have sought this particular fragrance out to try, but when I did, I liked it instantly and I kind of just forgot all about the fact that I was wearing geranium because it was all a psychological uh, connection or blockage that I'd created in my head and now I really really love this scent and and I'm more willing to try well I'm more keen to try things that have got geranium in there that, that uh, are more predominantly geranium so yeah that one there was one that I never expected to like, but I, I basically love now. His next question is, have you ever experienced a sort of synesthesia, I can't even say that properly, where on first sniff of a fragrance, uh, it reminded me of something else entirely, like a song or a movie? So the answer to that is yes, but the, the, most, the most vivid, occurrence that that's that's happened with uh is uh with the the fragrance dervish by rogue perfumery uh, and i'm gonna cut, put a couple of pictures up on screen to to better illustrate what it reminded me of when when i was a kid we had these two items of furniture in in the, the house i was growing up not exactly these but it was a vinyl sofa and one of those big I, I don't even know if there's a proper name from them. they were a huge stereo with a record player and radio uh, but they were a piece of furniture it was a big uh, cabinet basically and I don't know why whenever I spray dervish even even though it may not have anything to do with the smells of those two pieces of furniture, I immediately am reminded of those two pieces pieces of furniture. So I, I don't know what it is uh, about that scent that that happens to me for. There are a couple of fragrances in my wardrobe that make me think of particular movies. The first one is the Decay of the Angel by Timothy Hahn. This scent, for whatever reason, always evokes imagery from the movie, uh, the 80s movie Kiss of the Spider Woman with, with William Hurt. And the other fragrance where I get specific movie imagery from is Ombre Rousse by Parfum Dompierre. And the movie that it makes me think of is uh, Last Tango in Paris from the, from the 70s. 
Don't ask me why, I just always seem to think of those movies when I'm wearing those scents. So the last question that Christopher asked me is, is there one fragrance in my wardrobe that I can't ever imagine not having, uh, even to the extent of buying a backup bottle? There are probably more than one, but the first one that came immediately to my head was uh, this one, this is 17. 40, Marquis de Sade from Histoire de Parfum. Now, I am not one for buying backup bottles of stuff because I already have a lot of bottles and I, I can't even imagine getting through one bottle anytime soon, let alone, uh, you know, needing them, being worried about discontinuation or whatever. However, if I had, if I did find out that for whatever reason his size de parfum was going to stop making 1740, I would definitely buy at least one backup bottle of this just to ensure that it sees me through to the grave. Okay, the next question is from a subscriber, Hunter Law Abbott Fragrances, and the question is, what are your thoughts on fragrances expiring? Uh, I, I. <laughs> I don't have much experience with that happening to me. I do believe, I do believe that if they're not stored properly uh, and they're exposed to too much light, too much heat, it, that can certainly contribute to fragrances turning. Um, and this is just based on experience and uh, what a lot of other people say as well. And my experience was when I was younger and I didn't really know much about fragrance, I would keep one, that one bottle of cologne that I would wear every day in a, in a hot steamy bathroom near a window exposed to light. And after a while, I would wonder why it wasn't as potent as it used to be and not smelling quite right. So I think that de that definitely happens. If, if fragrances are stored properly, i.e. Uh, in mild temperature, cooler temperatures, in the dark, I believe that they can last for years and years and years. And, and vintage, old vintage fragrances are like proof of this as well. I do also believe the theory of top notes evaporating just due to being exposed to air oxygen. That's that kind of makes sense to me with the very basic knowledge of of uh, chemistry and and you know perfume chemistry that I that I'm aware of. So yeah, I, I to answer your questions, I I think if they're looked after, you don't ever need to worry about perfumes expiring. Okay, this is a question from fellow YouTuber Eve Spider Smells. And she's asking if I have a fragrance that I really enjoy, but would have it have trouble recommending to other people. And for example, it might be a very challenging fragrance. Now it's easy for me to say, I love this, you should try it. But yes, there are certain fragrances where I, I couldn't, you know, like honestly say, trust me you'll like this fragrance um so there's no particular fragrance but what I'll, I'll pinpoint a particular note that's common in a few of my favorite fragrances and that's the note of cumin okay so you you either are going to get used to it and enjoy that that note or you'll never get used to it and mainly because it does have the reputation of reminding people of B.O. sweat basically when you know to my nose when it's blended really well with other notes uh, It's a really gorgeous warm sensual Note to have in perfumes and I love it in things like absolute pour le soir It's in a couple of other ones that I have up in Salome from Papillon uh, Perfumery, so I really love it, but it's certainly not a note that anyone can just instantly like. Okay, uh, my friend Kate Apted has asked me what are my three favorite oud fragrances. So 
I want to preface this by saying I'm, I've never fully explored, you know, oud oils, oud, um, really getting getting to know all the facets of natural oud. So my only exposure to oud is what you find in quite commercial perfumery. So the three three of my favourite fragrances that feature this note, whether it's whether it's synthetic or, or natural oud. Uh, the first one is Al Oud from L'Artis and Parfumeur. Uh, the second one would be Tobacco Oud from Tom Ford. And the third one, I really, really enjoy Black Oud from Montal. That's a, that's a, you know, a proper, one of the early Oud Rose combinations. And the follow-up question from Kate was, have I tried Black, The Black Knight and Lost in Heaven from Francesca Bianchi? The answer to that is yes, I tried them when they, um, when they were released and my very initial reactions, and I haven't done reviews for these, my very initial reactions on first wear was, I, Lost in Heaven was much more instantly likable on my skin, but what happened was that uh, as I wore the Black Knight a lot more, it, it became one that develops and shows more of its of its characteristics the more often you wear it. They're totally different fragrances, and I really like both of them. But I have a bottle of the Black the Black Knight. I might still get a bottle of Lost in Heaven as well. Okay, so subscriber Marin Chris Ditch. I hope I pronounced that right has asked me what is my biggest perfume purchase regret, regrets, uh, and the follow-up question, what is uh, an, a really good underrated fragrance that everyone should try? I'll answer the first part of, uh, there's, a, there's a couple. One was purchasing a bottle of Aqua de Gio Profumo. I, kind of never liked it right from the beginning. I, I, this was very early on for me when it was released, I really bought into the hype. The, the stupid thing is, is I never really loved Aqua, the original Aqua de Gio and I don't know what it was about the Profumo that made me think I would like it, but I just never ever got along with it. I, I, I actually got a couple of compliments when I wore it, but I never, never liked wearing that that fragrance so i bought that full price retail and i regret buying that and my other two uh, regrets were two bottles i i bought uh, from fortin manley they were probably the most they are to this day the most expensive fragrances that i've gotten rid of because for for what you have to pay for them uh i, I think they're a bit they're, they underperformed and I also, after a while, found them a little bit boring. So the one perfume underrated, um, look this was a difficult one for me because underrated is, is well it's obviously very subjective because this particular perfume, I don't think anyone really underrates it but it doesn't get talked about a lot it's from Serge Lutan this one is a vetiver oriental and I really love it because well I mean I, I'm choosing it because compared to the rest of the house this one you don't hear about too often and what I really love about it is that it's vetiver with with a twist like there's not there's not been anything else I've smelled that's incorporated Vetiver and and to my nose, it's not even a like a dominant vetiver fragrance. It's a it's it's got an it's got a resinous you know just a touch sweet base. There is like an amber accord sitting under there, but but with the vetiver on top, there is there is also it's it's kind of a, a sharpish almost citrusy vetiver that sits on top and it's got a, just a beautiful balance between the, between those contrasts of warm and resinous and, and sharp and bright uh, and, and then that development in the middle of, of, you know, little bit of earthiness transitioning into resin. It's just done beautifully as you would expect from Christopher Sheldrake. 
Okay, Lisa Esposito has asked if I can recommend any fragrances that feature pink pepper because it's become one of her favourite notes. Well, I had a look through my collection and surprisingly, although pink pepper is used extensively in a lot of fragrances, in my collection, the only the only one where I, I notice it when I'm wearing it is Christian Dior's Ombre Nuit, but I can give you a, I can give you three recommendations at three price levels to at least try because if I was if I was looking at some pink pepper fragrances I would try these ones first. So I'll start with the most expensive one, uh, and that is from Ormond Jane. This this one is called Isfarkand. Isfarkand. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. But that's the that's the expensive one that I would I would test and try out. The mid tier one that you should look at as well is Eccentric O1 from Molecule Molecule O1. Yeah, Eccentric Molecules. Sorry. So that is ISO E Super, but there is uh, there is Pink Pepper as its its supplementary uh, notes and accord in that one. And the third house I would look at is. Molten Brown, which are at a cheaper price point as well, and they make a couple of pink pepper fragrances, which I'll I'll stick on the screen here. I've I've had Molten Brown fragrances before, and for the and for the price that you pay for them, they're pretty good value, and I highly recommend their shower gels. Okay, Mark Harrington asked me if these days with all the especially among fra fragrance heads, fragrance enthusiasts, whether there can be such a thing as a signature scent. And my answer to that is, depending on, it depends on what you define as a signature scent. Now, I guess the, the, the most basic meaning of a signature scent would be uh, when going back to the days when, when particularly guys and women um, would have one scent on their dresser or in their bathroom cabinet and wear that every day or only wear that when they went out or whatever and they might spray something else on occasionally and basically it's it was it became your smell uh so you became identified with that smell that would be a signature scent i i can't say that there is well i know that there is one not one fragrance that I wear much more than any other fragrance in my collection. So I've got like, you know, including samples, well over a hundred, you know, just under 200 fragrances that I try and rotate through. So I don't have a signature scent in that sense. But what I will tell you is that I know that, I'll, I'll give you an example. When my son was a bit younger, uh, he, for some reason, war, uh, smelled. One day, I was wearing green Irish tweed, and he really uh, reacted to that smell. Like he really, you know, absorbed it and remembered that smell. So every time I wore it again, he would recognise it. And and I'm sure that he is going to have that association of green Irish tweed with me probably for the rest of his life. And I don't really rare, wear green Irish tweed anymore. So that that's that's one way to look at it. He he will identify that fragrance with me and in some way that's that's his that's my signature for him. And the follow-up question to that was how do I overcome choice paralysis? I the only way I can do that, and I have to do this, and it's probably slightly OCD, is I keep a spreadsheet of my fragrances, and I literally, um, and I use, you know, databases like Base Notes and Parfumo. Uh, I try and rotate, basically, and whatever I haven't worn, I'll, I'll know what it is that I haven't worn for the longest time, and, you know, the next day I'll have a look and I'll wear, I'll wear whatever's next on the list. Depending on, you know, if I'm trying something new, I will I will probably wear that for several days in a row as well, just to familiarize myself with it, and then it goes into the rotation. Uh, the only time, you know, the, so yes, that's how I come out, uh, choice paralysis. There is no way 
I mean, I could try and do it, but there's no way I can open my, my fragrance drawers each morning and spend minutes there trying to decide what I'm going to wear. I very rarely stand there and let my mood dictate what fragrance I'm going to wear. If anything, it's going to be the fragrance that is going to dictate my mood for the day. Okay, Rich Mitch has asked if I have a favourite line in perfumery and by that he means like a particular line within a fragrance house. And the short answer to that is not particularly because, you know, immediately I think of things like uh, less exclusives, private collections, uh, private labels, Maison Christian Dior and all of that kind of thing. But I do have an answer for you and it's a bit of a cheats answer, but one of my favorite lines and mainly because I, I really like uh, most of these fragrances are from the House of Caron and it's basically the masculine line of fragrances. So even though they, were, they weren't released all at the same time, there were years and years between them, uh, I really enjoy these, in particular, these three Caron masculines. They're all current versions, uh, Port An Homme, uh, Le Trois de Mom, and Yatigan uh, are, th are three of my favorites. So yes, I would pick Caron's masculine line. Okay, next question is from Vive Smack, and she's asking if I have a spray routine, whether I spray out it straight out of the shower, that kind of thing. Yes, I do. So I will shower in the morning and I will wait till I'm dressed before I spray because I do like to get some of the scent on my clothes as well as my skin. And my usual spraying routine, I don't think about it much. It's more instinctive these days is that I'll do a couple of sprays at least under, under the shirt on my chest. Uh, and maybe a couple of sprays on the back of my neck sometimes on my wrist if I want to, you know, if I want to smell it or just see how, how it's performing basically. And I will, I've gotten to the point now where if I'm spraying something familiar, I'll know instinctively how many sprays to spray. And some sprays could be up to six sprays and some could be as little as two sprays. There's not really anything in my wardrobe where I think that one spray is enough, even though it may be. Rami Al Azawi uh, has asked me a question. Uh, do I, right now, do I prefer dirty levers, dirty patchoulis or sweet resins? If you'd asked me this time last year, I probably would have said dirty levers, but right now I'm very much into dirty patchoulis or clean patchoulis. Okay, so these are some questions from Instagram followers and friends. So Tanis Cook, I hope I pronounced that correctly, wants to know my thoughts on current version of Timbuktu compared to the older version because apparently some people are upset about how different it is. I did a video on this a little while back and I had a sample of the new Timbuktu compared it to my bottle of the older version. And to be honest, in that video, I didn't really notice much difference at all. Uh, and I'd happily buy a new bottle of Timbuktu when I needed to. Okay, another question from Instagram, Payfum has asked if I find equipage geranium similar to Guerlain Derby or Derby. And the answer to that is pretty easy, no. So one is predominantly geranium, it's, it's uh, lighter, fresher, and it's on a, on a bed of blonde woods. The, the derby, derby, <laughs> is carnation, uh, and predominantly carnation. It's a bit warmer and, it's, and it sits on a, a lovely posh leather base. The one, the one thing they've got in common is their spices. This is, the, the equipage is more peppery, whereas because of the carnation, there is definitely um, a clove association with the derby. They're both, they're both in the ballpark of being elegant, sophisticated, classy scents, but quite different. And one's probably, if I had to pick seasons, uh, you know, 
warmer seasons, cooler, cooler seasons. La Dolce Papi asks what is my favorite uh, Kia perfume, i.e. leather perfume. I have a few at the moment, but three favorites off the top of my head are 1740. Uh, I am enjoying Zing from L'Artis and Parfumeur, and the other one is Gucci Guilty Absolute. Perfume, perfumed Angle has asked me if I could start again, i.e. perfume collecting, knowing what I know now, what would be the first perfumes I'd choose or buy? This was really difficult for me to answer in that it's, it's really hard because I guess I would have to go with my current tastes now and and buy what I want to buy right now. So with with that context in mind, what I would probably do armed with this kind, I mean, it's it's a very, it's hypothetical obviously, but if I know what, if I somehow had it in my head what I know now, if I was starting again, I would begin with the classics of perfumery to start with. Um, you know, it, I would start with Guerlain, for instance. Try sample all the all their uh, all their pillars, and because basically, I would I would be able to see I would get a picture of where the original the, that original style came from, and and then have a picture of how things have evolved over time into what we have now and, and perfume like a lot of other things is subject to trends and uh and you know fashion and whatever's in but i'm you know i'm less i'm less inclined now to believe there is anything new under the sun that hasn't been created uh even 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 new indie stuff that i really enjoy now they're getting their influence from something. They're just putting a new original twist on that. So I guess I would start with building a wardrobe of, of classics that I still enjoy and then letting that lead me into my future purchases. Okay, the perfumed advocate uh, asked me if there is a note in perfume that I that I don't enjoy or don't understand why other people like. And there are certainly notes that I don't, it's not even that I dislike them. I think when they're not used, if I don't like a perfume, I don't like the perfume. It's not really because of a specific note. And you know, for instance, I love a lot of leather notes and a lot of leather accords are built around the, the uh, the isobutylquinoline uh, aroma chemical and in some fragrances when that is overused that fragrance is essentially repulsive to me but it's obviously used in a lot of fragrances that, that I enjoy so I guess my, my answer to that is no um, I understand why a whole bunch of notes are used in perfumery you know, I, I don't enjoy aquatics that much, particularly cologne, uh, cologne, however you pronounce it, um, used in stuff like Aqua de Gio. But I mean, it has its place. It's it's like enjoying paintings without liking, you know, where I don't like the color, this, this shade of blue or that shade of red. It, I've got to like the whole painting rather than, than one part of it. And the last question I'm going to answer is from Brian Laney from Instagram and they just wanted to know how long I've been into perfume and the short answer is this intensely probably about well it's, it's about four years nearly five now um, where I've actually really you know taken an interest and read up about stuff and read reviews and all of that kind of thing and before that i enjoyed perfume like any other lay person would enjoy perfume but you know i've been a proper fragrance lover enthusiast for for nearly five years now uh 
Guys, thank you for asking all those questions and I've, been, I've really enjoyed thinking about my answers and, and putting it together on this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.